Hello everyone and welcome to another drawing tutorial video and in this one I decided to take a look at a drawing that I did in my daily sketchbook and uh, fix it. Uh, the face is gross. I think the proportions of the body are good but the face is bad. It's just too cramped, too shrouded, too weird looking. So all I decided to do was to import it to Manga Studio and just trace the whole thing and change the face and so that's the process that this video is going to undergo and I'm going to show you what I do so I just imported it as a JPEG I just took a picture of the sketchbook with my phone and um, imported it and then made it a little bit transparent put it on the bottom layer and then on top I decided to start tracing and I usually work in three layers a very rough layer and then I'll work on a very um, refined rough layer I guess you could call it and then lastly, I'll work on uh, the inks. So, through this, I'm just going through and doing the inks. And let me make sure this mic isn't clipping. I'm sorry if the beginning is clipping. Let me just lower this a little bit. Okay, hopefully now it's a little bit more, uh, more well put together. Okay, so, in this process, I'm just tracing over my drawing, which I did in my daily sketchbook. I do have a daily sketchbook. Um, which I upload pictures of every week and uh, I try to sit down at least once a day and draw at least one thing on one page some days it's just um, technique building exercises other days it's sketches and this one was a nice sketch I ended up coloring it in watercolor using watercolor pencils but the sketch came out really nice except for the face once I finished inking and coloring it I took a step back looked at it and hated it and you know sometimes that happens and being able to recognize what it is that I hate about it is what makes someone grow as an artist so here I finally finished tracing so I can turn off the image and now I can go in and do a more refined look and I've been practicing a lot I've actually been reading two how to draw books uh, one of them is a how to draw book and I have it here called how to draw by Scott Robertson and Thomas Bertling and it is a really good book for industrial art and uh, industrial design. I have post-its and notes in it all over the place. It has good technique building exercises in it, which is why I bought it. I also follow Scott Robertson on YouTube, which I recommend you follow him. I think it's just Scott Robertson. You just look him up. Uh, another book that I bought because I thought I love the way this guy draws is um, Rough Justice by Alex Ross. And it's the basically the sketch designs that Alex Ross uses are, are used in, when working in DC especially in Superman and Batman and Shazam or um, Captain Marvel and uh, it's just a really good book it has a lot of great art in it and a lot of really interesting things and he does a lot of it in, in watercolor he does a lot of it in, in pencils and to see how he works with it is really brilliant it really does help a lot um, my favorite is uh, how he can take a pose and turn it 360 degrees and draw it on on the different tangents and uh, make the proportions basically exact. I mean, there's slight differences, but you know, for drawing on pencil, it's just so exact and something that I aspire to be like one day. Obviously, not anytime soon, but you know. Another thing that I want to notice, uh, I want to note is that. I've seen myself get a lot better at drawing and a lot quicker at doing good anatomy. A pose like this would have taken me a couple a couple hours to do in a sketchbook last year. But because I've been working on a sketchbook and because I've been doing a lot of daily sketches and I try to do a lot of different poses and I'm mostly working with superheroes just because that's kind of what I like to draw. But just being able to turn anatomy and do things like that is is coming along much nicer now and I can definitely see now you can see here I turned it on and off the image much better I think the the face looks much more natural much more Clark Kent Superman much less weird creepy mouse man um, but yeah like the doing a daily sketchbook and committing to it to, to say that I'm going to draw at least one thing a day has helped me so much I've had my current sketchbook actually have it here give me a second okay I've had it I started it back in 
I can tell you the exact date because I put dates on everything. Uh, the 10th of December, and uh, this sketchbook has, I don't know how many pages, but um, I'm going to finish it probably by the end of the week at this rate. And uh, I've drawn all kinds of things in it, and having it and sitting down and doing this for a half an hour or for one page a day, usually I do it while I watch some TV or while I unwind at the end of the day when I come home from work, have a cup of coffee, and draw a little bit. And just having that routine and sketching every day has helped me grow so much. It's I cannot encourage you enough. Go out, buy a sketchbook. This one cost me, uh, I got them at Michael's, and I got actually a set of three for $10. So this was, what, three bucks, something like that? Um, well worth it, well worth it. And I actually bought a new one which uh, with a little bit thicker paper because this one wasn't for... Well, I didn't start, I didn't know how to do watercolor pencils and watercolor at all. And so I started doing that with the sketchbook and just trial and error. And eventually I picked up how to do it. And um, now that I'm doing it, I see that coloring with, with watercolor is just so much cooler. And um, so now I need to buy, <laughs> I'm thinking of buying different sketchbooks with watercolor paper in them or thicker paper so that I can paint on them and it won't bleed through or wrinkle the pages. Um, but yeah, as for anything that you see on screen here, I'm working on the hair and I look at it here and it looked too bulgy on one side so I decided to bring it back, tone it down and um, try to even it out, give him a nice clean cut look. And I'm not going to go in and add all the lines because I'll do that with the coloring. And as you can see there I added some lines under the neck for the chin, uh, for the Adam's apple, and I'll actually go back and delete those because they stand out too much. They pop out too much, and they're a little bit distracting. So I'll also add those in with the coloring. So right now, this is the inking phase. So we started with the blue layer, which was very rough, and then the red layer became a lot more cleaned. And now the inking phase, I'm taking a lot more time, doing things a lot, you know, a lot smoother, making sure they look fluid. I try to use longer lines, use my draw from my arm and not from my wrist, which is something that I used to do. Um, and that gives the overall sketch a much nicer feel. So at this point, I went in, I added a contour around everything, as you can see there, but just to make the character pop out a little bit, make the overlapping areas, like the crossed arms, look like they're in front of the actual image. So in doing this, it really genuinely helped very much in getting everything situated and put together. And uh, it gives the, the, overall, the overall image a good pop. So it's a good thing to do. It's a good thing to practice. It's a good thing to do often. I highly, highly encourage it. And now for the last bit here, um, we're getting into the point where I'm going to start coloring. And so for this, I decided to pick some colors. And uh, here you can see me going in, and before the coloring, I like to do the shadow. Sometimes I do coloring, then shadow, and sometimes shadow, then coloring. I decided to do a hard light from the left, uh, from the left side of the screen. So I'm going to give it a very thick black shadow all along one side. And so that's what this blue is. I draw it in blue so I can see where I need to go over to make sure I don't have any white bleeding through. Um, that's what you're seeing here. And basically how I did the shadow was because the light is so strong on one side, it'll create a really big contrast between dark and bright. So that's exactly what I'm going for. So there's a big thick dark line on the right side. Now the reason I don't run that all the way to the edge is because light, um, light bends, light bounces off objects and it'll wrap around him. So you'll get some light bleeding through the, the other side and that's what that's how you see here. And again, all I'm doing is drawing these shapes and then I'm going to fill them in with the fill tool. Eventually I'll switch over and I'll do it using the lasso tool where I can just lasso the shapes that I want and fill them. I find that that's a lot, um, a lot quicker than doing this because in this I have to be careful not to draw and you know, it's a little bit less control like this. I feel like I have more control with the lasso tool. But either way that works for you is a good way. And again, I just, I like to have some reflective you know, some reflective light. As you can see there, it, the the light on his torso uh, isn't showing, so once I notice that, I erase it out. I want to be able to show some light there. 
um, and show that this figure, it, it makes the figure pop out and look more dimensional and less flat. And that's so important. I cannot stress how important that is. So as you can see on the neck, I erased the black lines under the chin and then replaced it with a deep shadow. And uh, I, another thing that I noticed is a lot of people don't like to shade the face. I find that shading the face can add really cool um, depth to it. Like uh, I like to shade under the eye and in the bridge to the nose because it makes it look like there's a deep uh, a depth to the eye socket. And that's really important and really realistic. So that's another thing. And uh, on a side note, I've been drawing a lot of Superman. I I love Batman. I love he's my guy, but I am having such a hard time drawing a Batman that I'm happy with. And I I'll I'll post some some pictures of my daily sketches of Batman. Um, but I'm just not not having a good time drawing drawing Batman. It's just very tough for me. Superman seems more natural for some reason. I'm not sure why. But yeah, that's just the way it goes. And um, so there you go, that's the completed shadow. Uh, now I'm going to go in with the lasso tool, just make some squiggles in the hair. And that's going to be where the, the deep of the shadow is. And again, it's on the right side because the light is hard on the left. So all the right angles, are all the things that are pointing to the right will have that, that deep shadow. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it's not confusing or, or obscure to anybody to notice why I'm doing that. So you can see that on the left side there's very little shadows. On the right side we have very strong deep shadows. And um, that's really important. Really important to keep that consistent to give the image the realistic look. If not, you break reality, people will be able to tell that it's a drawing. And again, here it is in black and I'm just going to tone it down a little bit, bring the opacity down, um, and I'll bring it down a little bit more once I add the color. So now we're going to move on to colors. I picked a stock blue and then I just up the the hue and lowered the saturation a bit. So I get a little bit of a deeper blue, but not as bright or as um, artificial, I, I, I guess. So now I'm just going to go in and lay the thick colors. And I'm not going to spend too much time going into details on this. It's just, you know, filling in the blanks. Wherever a color is bleeding through, I'm just going to go back and, you know, make sure that I can fix where it's bleeding. I don't want that bleeding to happen. It would suck. Um, and this is a very basic thing. I just fill in the, the flat colors. I don't do highlights. I go around, fill in all the blues, all the reds, all the yellows, all the skin tones, all the hair tones. And then I'll go back and add a, a lighter color highlight. And I only do a darker highlight on the hair, I think. Yes, I think that's correct. Now the reason I do this is because, well, I want the hair to have more pop, but also Superman doesn't have brown hair. He has black hair. And so I want it to be shown that Superman's hair is actually dark and black and not just uh, a hue of brown. So that's why I go back and add a lot of dark colors to the hair later. So now we've done our blues here. And you can see it's a kind of matte blue. It's not too shiny, not too crazy. And yes, I do color his eyes blue. Some comics it's blue, other comics it's black. Not sure why. Uh, I'm going to color it blue and then I'm going to go back and darken it so it's not a big deal. Now this blue might seem very powerful, very um, bright, but that's because it's contrasting to the white background. Once we add in all our colors and add in a background, everything will be much more, um, will, will flow much smoother. 